What's up, guys? Me and Larson are back with our week eight recap. It was a, uh, it was interesting. That's all I got to say. Um, we had a very uh, ugly start to the week, I guess I would call it. So uh, my week started on Thursday. I had the under in Georgia Tech, Virginia. That was easy. Um, just felt like an under game to me, 47 and a half. That's a lot of points for those two teams, especially with how bad Virginia has yeah. been on offense. So that was a good win to start the week. And then Saturday, the noon slate started to get a little dicey. Yeah, yeah, there was a brief period. I want to say it was like the first like hour maybe where geez, I was through the, I was going through it cuz there was the there was a period where you were you were like is Ohio State really not going to cover this game somehow? The Iowa defense with their their magic. I mean, CJ Stroud just drops the ball and they score. I just I couldn't I couldn't believe it. Uh SMU yeah, was getting killed. It was just Navy everything was, was getting going killed. Wrong. Navy yeah. did end up getting killed, which is okay. Uh, that was that was ended up surprisingly being one of my only uh, black eyes of the noon slate with Iowa's team yeah. total first half under four and a half, which I believe Ohio State would have been fine without the uh, without the scooping score. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, we talked I about was... that. I we, we I was like, yeah, you know, they make me nervous because when they muff that punt against Rutgers, and you said, I don't know if they could punch it in if they got a muff punt, but. They didn't have to punch it in. They, they didn't even have to. Dude just ran it. I, it was unbelievable. I was lucky to get because I ended up also just betting their their team total with, with ten. But it was just like, how much longer is the Iowa defense going to get away with this? Where they they just where they do this? I don't know. Yeah. Luckily, Ohio State was able to pull away. It seemed pretty easy. Second half, we knew we were getting into, but that was a good one. That was the big escape for me, too, is if you remember at the end of the first half, there was four seconds left in the first half. It was third down. Ohio State was up six. Yes, yeah. they're up six. Yeah. And I had six and a half for first. No, it was in the first, right. first half. First, first quarter. quarter. First yes, quarter. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so it's they're up six, and they're on the 15 or so, and they throw up a jump ball to the end. So clear pass interference, if you ask me. Uh, but it was third down. They don't call it. Iowa gets the pass breakup. If they call the pass interference, Ohio State probably takes it into the second quarter um, with a fresh set yeah. of downs on the goal line. They don't call it. Clock stops four seconds. Ohio State kicks the field goal. That was that was a big escape for me. That that yeah kind of turned my day around. It felt like because after that I got kind of hot. Yeah, yeah. Well, and so then I can't remember. I mean, did, did we have anything on Clemson? Clemson I had the under in that game, and that was a sweat. Um, yeah. I got lucky. Because at the end of that game, Clemson was up three, and then they went down and kicked another field goal, which meant that Syracuse could not – if Syracuse was only down three, they could have kicked a field goal maybe, and then it would have been at 48 going into overtime. So that would have been cooked regardless because I had it right at 50. It would have been 51 or, or a touchdown more than that. Uh, so I got lucky on that one. That one was really close. SMU comes storming back to save that one. That one looks dead back. as can be. And uh, yeah, and then, then I went on a nice little run. I had I. This is kind of when the three thirty because I I think Ohio was the two o'clock game. This is when I kind of started coming back and had a really good afternoon. Uh, Ohio covers three, and then Oregon uh, minus six, and they, they they hit the over pretty quickly into the yeah. game. I think it maybe middle of the third quarter. One punt that whole game, and I believe it was the fourth quarter because Oregon was like, we don't need to go for it anymore. I mean, that was Bo Nix at home and. Oregon's for real. That was an easy one. They look one. really good. I mean, after that yeah. Georgia game, they've they've been a pretty good team, and Dan Lanning's having a good first season. Uh, and, you know, they're getting some good recruits in too, so Oregon's going to be kind of scary in, uh, in the yeah. years to come. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what else. Yeah, Ohio was a good one. I really like Ohio. They've won me a few. They've been good to us this year. This year. Yeah, they really have. I had, I had Toledo uh, minus seven at Buffalo, which was a really random one. But Toledo was up 27 to – 10 going into the fourth and lost 34 27 that one sucked that's bad that was that was the bad one yeah oregon was a good one save me uh, this uh, and you want to talk about dicey this the texas um the texas game i'm yeah. not betting on texas i'm swearing off texas i promise yeah. you won't hear texas again on this show so i did have their team total under 31 and a half and going into halftime they had 31 points i was like oh here we go this is easy they ended with 34. They almost didn't get it. <laughs> and, um, you know, they ended up losing the game. I thought they were in control, but the second half, Quinn Ewers couldn't hit anybody. I think he finished like 19 of 40. He, he looked razzled. He looked absolutely just just all over the place. Kind of lost. Really surprising to see that. Yeah, and um, I think our other disappointment – I think this was a later game. Do you have any other 330 games? 
I had LSU. I was big on LSU. Yeah, I really like LSU. Swore that LSU had gotten my last dollar, but I kind of want to bet them against Alabama now. <laughs> well, the, so the and the thing is with Ole Miss, and this is this is kind of a hot take here, I guess. I don't know. I, I think Ole Miss is going to lose out the rest of their season. Um, you look at the their last few games. Vanderbilt was dominating them. Auburn got whatever they wanted. LSU, <clears throat> LSU obviously got whatever they wanted, but. I'll talk about it towards the end, but they're at Texas A&M this week, and it's an ugly, ugly game, but I, I like Texas A&M a lot. I just think that that Ole Miss defense is going to hurt them. I I see them finishing 7-5 and five this season. I really do. So I loved just, LSU, though. At home, LSU is good. LSU is a good team, man. They should have beaten Florida State. I mean, yeah. You think about it, they're, one. their only real you know blemish is Tennessee for the most part. Right. Yeah. Um, so I don't, yeah, I, I, LSU over six and a half wins look dead in the water, and it looks like we really got some life now. Great, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to be a popular pick, I think, with with Bama in the next week. I'll be interested to see that. And then, yeah, I had a pretty average night slate. Uh, we we were both on Air Force; they got crushed. Yeah, um, that's my talk about last dollar. I'm done with them. Yeah, me too. Brutal. Um, did you see? I, did you see how they lost? By the way, because I, I was I watching did not. the game. I wasn't. Watching they, the game. um, I think they were down. 19 to four they were down 19 to 14 they got a critical stop on third down to get the ball back and they like went to commercial i guess they went to commercial before the punt is how it was described to me and they came out from the commercial break <clears throat> there was a flag on air force they had two guys on the defense with the same number automatic first down boise runs out the clock and wins the game that i'm is... glad i was not watching that Undisciplined service academies. That's Horrible. something I can't stand. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Uh, probably my worst pick of the week. We'll get to best and worst. Minnesota plus five. I thought Minnesota was going to dominate the run game, and uh, that didn't happen. Penn State showed that they've got some guts, and they might be a, a trendy pick this week against Ohio State. I still don't think they win that game. I think it might be a little closer. What's the spread? About 15 and a half, 16? Yeah. Yeah. It might be a little yeah. close. I just don't trust Penn State either. They're a team that I've just been off on all year. I, th- I had their win total under. Like, I was just I- – I can't get a read on them, and I'm probably just going to leave Penn State alone for the rest of the year. Yeah, it's got to suck, too, for Minnesota because it was, what, two weeks ago they were like – we were saying they were going to be the sacrificial lamb, and then it's – Ibrahim got banged up. Tanner Morgan got banged up. They lose these games. It's, yeah, the, the death coming early for Minnesota. I forgot I had Wisconsin. I loved Wisconsin against Purdue. It was a gross pick because who in the world was betting Wisconsin? Wisconsin's awful. But they actually well, look good under Jim Leonard. They actually look pretty serviceable. I think I'm still safe for their team total under. I think I had them at nine and a half. I don't think they get yeah. to 10 wins. There might what be a path there, but I, I think I looked up their schedule. I think they're six and two, eight. maybe five and three. Something like that. But they're going to get Maryland won't be easy. Iowa, first team to score 10 wins that game. Yeah. Nebraska and Minnesota. Yeah, they're, they're, they're tough games for Wisconsin standard coming up. Yeah. And they're they're very liable to trip up in one of those games. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm not too concerned about that one. Um, this was probably my best pick. <laughs> this was kind of just a dumb brain pick. I saw ECU at home with plus odds, and I took them plus six, and they ended up yeah. dominating outright. Yeah, me too. I, I love that. I ECU, we need to remember them because they, they're one of those teams that gets it done for us, a little bit of a wagon. I really like them at home, too. I took a money line. If they were playing BYU at home this week, I would absolutely be all over that. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that one's in Provo, so I'll, I probably will stay away. Uh, and then I guess we'll talk a little bit more about Texas A&M, South Carolina. I had that game under 45. Um, I didn't think A&M's defense would bend like that. It kind of looked like it – I think they started out really hot, and it looked like a game that maybe could have gone under, and then it just it, – it all just fell apart. Yeah. Carolina got a lot of their – like a lot of first quarter – Hype. I can't remember. It might have been the first quarter they scored 17 or the first half. They scored yeah, 17 in the first so. quarter. Yeah, they were up yeah. big. They 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 looked like they were going to dominate. It was really after the first quarter that AM settled in and they kind of made a late push for a comeback. But I, I did like South Carolina, South Carolina a lot in that game just because like we know I'm I'm gonna contradict myself here, but we know what we're getting from South Carolina. We don't know what we're getting from AM and I Carolina at home was gonna be always the play for me, but then now I like Texas A&M next week. So I don't know. This It's funny how this works. But If you yeah. had told me that South Carolina would have 168 passing yards and not throw for a touchdown, I would have said that the, this game would have went under. I would have took it at 35. But uh, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, they came out and they hit AM in the mouth, and that ended up being the difference too, because they only ended up winning by six. Um, yeah. But at least I had the spread on that one, so that kind of saved me a little bit. Uh another big escape too, which this game I also thought was dead in the water, was Kansas State and TCU. Yeah. Yeah, really worried about that. And and the unfortunate reality is if Adrian Martinez doesn't get hurt, and I think I think the Kansas State, the backup got hurt too, is what it looked like. Yeah. I mean, a little bit of luck if you want to call it that for TCU. But all that matters. I I think TCU was down 28 to 10, and then they scored in the second quarter. And then after that, they didn't score for the rest of the game. Yeah. Kansas State, 28 first half points, didn't score for the rest of the game. It's TCU. So now, now on social media and everything, all the podcasts you're going to listen to, they're going to talk about TCU getting lucky to play these backup quarterbacks. It was, you know, no Dylan Gabriel for Oklahoma. Uh, Daniels was out for Kansas. Sanders, I think, missed a quarter when they played Oklahoma State. And then you have Martinez go out. So four straight games where they've kind of gotten lucky. Um, and they're going to be at West Virginia this week. And West Virginia is going to be a very trendy pick. Ratty line. And I think it already is. Yeah, I think it, it's looking like seven and a half now. West Virginia is going to be the, the, the smart, trendy pick there. But it may be a little bit of a hedge. All that matters is the TCU future is still alive. Plus 1,400 is still alive. So, I don't know. That defense has to tighten up because they, 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 they're giving teams whatever they want. Yeah, I agree 100%. And uh, our Big 12 pick, I mean, just to the fact that everybody else doesn't look that good, we can, we can talk about some of the other big games like our Kansas, our Kansas Baylor. Um, but it looks like everybody else has just folded. Texas folded. Um, yeah. It doesn't really look like anybody's going to challenge them. Maybe Baylor, but I also had Baylor to win the Big 12, so I'm looking pretty good right now in that aspect. Yeah, I think Kansas State was pretty like popular too, which I didn't understand. I was wrong on that. They because they actually, they really do look good. Yeah, and uh, my last one that I wanted to talk about uh, back to on the fade Colorado uh, Oregon State first quarter uh, covered by half a point. Don't care the covered and then full game they absolutely blew the doors off a bad Colorado team. They're back to being Colorado. Yeah, let's not get carried away by the one. The one win. It was always Cal was always going to be the team. Like it, it was a weird. We talked about it. That was a weird. Line and then Cal comes week. out and, and gives Washington a hell of a game. Yeah, yeah. I I, I jumped on Cal kind of late for they were in a. I had him in a teaser and Cal's coach is like insane against the spread. I want to say he's like twenty five and thirteen as an underdog. The last six times, the last six times that Cal has been a favorite and lost outright. And then they're an underdog the next week. They've covered like six straight times. I, they're underrated, underrated wagon, uh, in Cal Berkeley. So. Sounds like you just got to stay away from them when they're favorites. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably what it is. I'm trying to see if I have any, anything else. I don't know. I've been playing a lot of like every week a big ten point teaser, three teams, move them ten points, and it's minus one twenty. And you can you can find some really good stuff there. This week I had Ohio State, Clemson, and Oregon State. So I was. There's an easy one. You can find some really easy stuff there. I really think that's a good money maker. Yeah. I uh, we'll start with some of the earlier games we had Wednesday. Uh, I, I didn't bet this game, but Georgia State I think is officially just we can we can just never bet them again. They're just yeah. so unpredictable. They come out and yeah. they get absolutely tarred and feathered by App State. Uh, absolutely <laughs> undressed. They're just you never know who's going to come out of a tunnel every week after week. I think Georgia State's just turned into a big stay away from me. They were they were fun the first four weeks, and it's. The, the, oh, the carriage is back into a pumpkin now. Yeah. Uh, and I will say another thing on Cincinnati SMU with, with, with SMU going for that two-point conversion. Even though I had them, I was actively rooting for them to not get that two-point conversion. Yeah, me too. I said I just wanted my cover. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll take the cover and escape. Uh, we already talked about Syracuse, Clemson. We already talked about Ohio State and Iowa. Uh, who cares? Bama. Game of the week. Rutgers comes out on top against uh, Indiana. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we big can talk, for my we can, win total. Yeah, we can talk Kansas-Baylor. Yeah. Um, Kansas came back there a little bit at the end, but it yeah. really looks like we're turning back into Kansas. Like, okay, they're a bowl team, but they weren't ever, they weren't ever going to make this magical run. It was, it was nice while yeah. it lasted. They punched up for a little bit. Lance Leipold definitely made himself some money at Kansas or somewhere else, but it feels like the Kansas yeah, maybe Wisconsin. blindly, blindly, yeah, blindly riding Kansas is, is done. And I'm trying to see too Kansas's last few games here. I mean, they're going to get Oklahoma State. They could win. Texas Tech, but it's it's Oklahoma State, Texas Tech, Texas, and Kansas State. And it's crazy because I think the the stat was the last time they started 5-0. I want to say it was 2008 or 9, maybe. 
they ended up losing seven straight games and didn't make a bowl. I mean, if they start five and zero and have the same thing happen here, that's got to just be the worst. I can't imagine that. So, yeah, I'm 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 off Kansas. I'm gonna wait for them. You know, another fun story. But um, touch on the touch on the Bama game because the Bama game was. I got it coming up next. I actually didn't watch that one. This is one too. This is a big, big time games. We didn't bet. We talked about how Miami was probably going to be a play and they come out and get absolutely yeah. smacked. Yeah. Um, right thankfully I, I wasn't on that one. We kind of called it a stay away, but you were like, you know, public's going to be all over Duke to, and, and it's like, Oh, Miami will come out and, and make a statement and they just get absolutely no, embarrassed no. at home. Cross them off. No more, no betting Miami like at all. Absolutely whatsoever. not. Absolutely not. And then, uh, yeah, we talked Texas, Oklahoma State, Purdue, Wisconsin, and then yeah, Alabama. Uh, they come out, and I feel like this was a this was a stay away for me just on the principle of, okay, Bama's either going to come out and completely smash them, or you know, they're actually or it's having, close again. They actually have real problems, and yeah, of course, yeah, they, I, they I, I didn't, them. yeah, I didn't watch this one. They did cover the spread at twenty one and a half. Um, but, yeah, I'm glad I stayed away. I really don't know what to think of Mississippi State anymore. They've shown that their offense is a lot more vulnerable. I went from complete 180 over the past three weeks. I was so worried about having to go to Starkville for Georgia, and then now I was like, ah, oh, we can handle Tennessee to probably the complete opposite. Yeah. Yeah, I think that I'm going to be interested to see that trip to Starkville because it was, I want to say it was the COVID season where – where Alabama or Alabama killed Mississippi State and Mississippi State came to Athens and made that a close game. Yeah. So we got to see how it, that goes. I think it was because we played Kentucky that week and I was in Vegas. And I just remember Alabama just absolutely rolling Mississippi State yeah. at home. The stat was the stat was during the game, uh Mississippi State had not scored a touchdown in Tuscaloosa since 2014. Yeah. And, they and still then have. they score on the they score on the last the last play of the they score on the last play of the game. Like oh, that, one was, sec- that wasn't two field goals? Okay. One second yeah. snap. Yeah, literally one second snap it. They ran it in, and it was like the streak is broken. So, <laughs> yeah. This one, too, another one I didn't watch because I'm a sane person. Uh, Missouri 17, Vanderbilt 14. We called that a spot where Missouri might go into Columbia and win. Yes. Yes. I I actually did watch the fourth quarter of this game. I ha- I took a little bit on Vandy plus 14. Um, and... Missouri's Missouri's kicker missed a late kick and like I don't think Vanderbilt was ever going to win. It's what I took from the game, but Vanderbilt, we knew Vanderbilt could keep it close. We thought they're frisky. That. They're, they're frisky. frisky, but the the Vanderbilt under to go win oh, yeah, in the that's SEC, why. Yeah, that's why. Plus one ten did still doesn't make any sense. It still looks looks okay. So yeah. that's all that matters. And I think uh well let's I'm talk about say- this game because we're gonna get into it. Louisville comes out and embarrasses Pitt. I mean, they were a one-point favorite, but 24 to 10. Yeah, and the big takeaway from that game for me is Pitt scored early in the first quarter and did not score another touchdown after that. I want to say it was eight possessions. They got three points, which if you know anything about the Louisville defense, we remember them earlier in that Louisville-Florida State game that they, they have tendencies to be awful. That's a big statement from them. And that's what I want to see going into a week where you play Wake Forest. And it really looks like they are the smart bet there. I'm probably going to end up betting that. I just want to wait and see if we can get six. They get to six. They get to six. Let's talk about a couple games next week. I got Kentucky at 14. Uh, I had to buy it, I think, maybe a half or a point and a half. Yeah. Uh, But I got it early. And uh, if Kentucky can run the ball and their defense can show up and they can actually contain Tennessee – that's going to give Georgia a lot of tape, number one, which that's really what I care about. But I think they can. I think they can win outright. They could also get embarrassed. But uh, yeah, Kentucky's an interesting play this week. I, I'm comfortable with two touchdowns. If I lose that one, I'm not. I'm not losing my house. I put one unit on it. It's not anything crazy, but I like it. Yeah. Another one I like too. Uh, Michigan twenty and a half. Uh, Michigan State has not shown me anything at all, and I don't yeah. think Michigan is like the best team in the country. I think they can handle Ohio state, which means they can definitely handle Michigan state. Um, And I think this is another one where Harbaugh had that stink on him for so long. He could never beat any of his big rivals. And so he's going to try to come out and make a big statement and, and get, uh, and get a big win against Michigan state. Yeah. Interesting to look at. I want to say you got it at 20 and a half, right? It looks like it's up to 21 and a half and the public is early really liking the Spartans, which is kind of interesting to me. 
Um, I yeah. could see the I could see the I could see the angle though. Honestly, if you wanted to say Mich- uh, Michigan State, they just they beat Wisconsin. They 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 upset win against Wisconsin and. They're frisky, you know. They've they've shown Mill Tucker has shown that they can hang around these rivalry games, and it is a rivalry. Um, exactly, it is a rivalry right. game. So that right. that's a that's a key point there. But I don't know. Maybe maybe I put too much trust in Michigan. It is a one unit play for me. I don't or Michigan's love... for real, and exactly. they win by thirty five. I mean, it, I don't. Yeah, I don't love low anything this week. I did take a rat line. I had to. Uh, I'm going to go with Syracuse again. I got Syracuse minus two and a half against Notre Dame. I actually think Notre Dame is just not good. Yeah, I was really really hoping the public would like Notre Dame there because I was impressed by Syracuse. It was about as impressive of a loss as you could that's have. That's the problem though is and, now and we're that's in the, a, yeah. 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 That's the issue. Unfortunately there. it it sucks. That's the way it is. I'm going to wait and see though. It, it, it looks like it's hanging around three. So I don't know. And unfortunately I found myself build, betting another game involving Nebraska and Illinois, two teams that I have sworn off and I took Illinois minus seven. I think that's I think probably the right. Run, it, I think they way they moved. run the ball and play defense. I think they can control that game. Yeah, and I think it's moved. It opened at minus five and has gone up to like eight now. So it looks like that's that's the right side there. Uh, what a game there, though. No, I, Nebraska just – I don't even – I don't even know. Um, I mentioned West Virginia is probably going to be – they're getting a touchdown at home. They're probably going to be a trendy underdog with TCU. Um, Sharps love Georgia this week. I like to see that. It's up, up to minus 22. It's too many points um, for a rivalry game. Quote from a it man does, who just bet Michigan to cover to cover three touchdowns in a rivalry game. But <laughs> It does feel that way, though. It really does. Um, well, if it you looks remember like, last year's game, Georgia was only about to be up about the three nothing at halftime, and then Florida just went completely Richardson stupid. Richardson gave us some pick presents. six. Yeah, and then yeah. fumbles, and Nolan Smith gets the ball back. Georgia scores again, and that's when the floodgates really opened on that game. So that was a big hinge point. Is that going to happen again? It very well could, so – yeah, I I think I'd rather stay away from it. I don't really. I have enough know. emotionally invested in this game. Exactly. Now, so. I don't want to touch that. <laughs> I don't think. The other one I'm going to be looking at is Kansas State because if Martinez plays, they're they're at uh, at home to Oklahoma State. They should win that game. They really can. And it's moved. The public's all over Oklahoma State, but it's moved from Oklahoma State minus one to Kansas State minus one. Um, I went ahead and bet it today just because if Martinez doesn't play, I can always buy back on it. But I really like Kansas State in that one, especially at home. And with that Oklahoma State defense that is super sketchy, um, that was one I was looking at for me. And then Texas A&M. It's gross, but that's the way it's supposed to be. It is gross. I'm not taking it just for that reason. Yeah. I, I, I'm getting down. I'm whittling down. I, I don't I never have as many plays as I did because I have so many teams that I'm just crossing off the list. Yeah, and, which is uh, smart, which is smart. I mean, it needs to be that way. Yeah, and uh, the last one we we talked about, um, Colorado State, Boise State under 44 and a half. You, uh, you had the stat with Colorado State. Yeah, they are last, dead last in the FBS in finishing drives and third down conversions. And to go to, to Boise State, 44 points is a ton. And I want to say, let me make sure I get this right, Colorado State, their last few games, how many points have they scored? It is um, – let me see here. Probably not their, a lot. Their last five games, seven points, 10 points, 17 points, 13 points, 17 points. And the two times they scored 17 was against Hawaii, who is awful. legitimately awful, and Nevada, who is legitimately awful. So when they play any team with a pulse, it's you know 13 points, 10 points, 7 points. Um 44 is just a lot of points. So I'm going to look to play that straight up. And I think you could tease that. Like I talked about the 10 point teaser. Yeah. Oh, you throw that in 10 point teaser. They, they're not going over 54. No way. I don't think boys can do that themselves. hundred uh, percent. And that's really all I got so far that I like early. Only five. Um, I don't know if you had any others, but. No, that's good. Usually it's, usually it's, it's three, four five plays on Sunday that you like, and then you just let the market dictate the rest. So. Yep. We're our our records right now are are incredible. So yeah, I'm feeling great. Gotta so be good. guys, we appreciate y'all tuning in as always. If like I said, you see the numbers on the screen. We've been having a great year. Uh, we want to keep it up though. We'll have more plays on Wednesday or Thursday whenever we do the locks. And uh, you should definitely tune in. Handing out some good picks. Eleven and six last week. What was your record? I was six and four, but out, outside of the locks, I mean, and six and four is a good record. But outside of the locks, I on my other bets, I was. I was good. They're winning week. So 
Yeah. It's all good. that matters. All that matters is going positive. That's, that's what I say, but <laughs> guys, appreciate y'all tuning in. We'll see you later this week.